Hi, I'm Chris Wall, Chief Technologist at Rubrik, and welcome to another Engineering Deep Dive. Today I'm joined by Adam. And Adam, you were, what, a, a tech lead at Google um, for the search infrastructure team, as well as, what else are you working on? The, the file system, Colossus? Uh, obviously, some, some pretty big name things out there. Uh, so how did that experience kind of prepare you to build Atlas for Rubrik? Yeah, I think w while at Google, uh, one of the most important things I learned was how to build systems at scale. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when you're building a system that's running on thousands of nodes, uh, you know, hardware failures are a matter of course. Um, so you have to design the system to anticipate those failures and deal with them, um, you know, when they happen. Um, so, uh, you know, I think uh, a lot of the same principles apply to Atlas, which is also a cloud scale file system. Um, you know, we expect the same types of environments, um, same types of failure profiles. So we built the system, uh, you know, with similar principles in mind. Um, you know, working on these distributed systems problems uh, is really fun for me. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it's been a great journey so far. All right, I gotta admit, I have no idea how to build a file system. So my question to you is, uh, what was that experience like? But also, more importantly, why build your own? Why go from scratch versus picking something up off the shelf for Atlas? Yeah, so Atlas was written from scratch, um, and we had a couple different goals in mind. Uh, the first of which, of course, would be scale out. Uh, so it's masterless, right? There's no single point of failure or single chunk, choke point for performance. Um, you know, we want the system to scale linearly uh, with the number of nodes that you add. Okay. Um, also, we want it to be fault tolerant. You know, of course, in these large environments, we expect uh, hardware failures. Um, so the system will notice when something goes wrong and up replicate whatever data was lost. Okay, so you took the time, built it from scratch. Those sound like great things, but I also recall that we're aware of what application we're backing up. There's some awareness there. And also, I was hoping you could dive a little deeper on data integrity. Right, of course. So, uh, you know, another one of the benefits of writing up from scratch is we're able to optimize for application. Uh, so we are application aware, and our application is the data management application. Mm -hmm. um, so Atlas, the file system, understands that it's storing snapshot chains, which is what the blob engine uh, uses to back its snapshots. Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, this allows us to do things like uh, know that these snapshots are immutable um, and protect them with data integrity. So we have CRCs up and down the stack um, where we're validating that nothing's changed in the background. Mm -hmm. um, we're also validating on the read path. Um, and if we ever see an anomaly, we can just throw it away and let the system up replicate. Um, you know, this sort of allows our application to be confident uh, that data it's written in is never changed. And so that, I assume, has some kind of effect on ransomware because immutability tends to be the key criteria for making sure that it can't be encrypted and harmed and that kind of jazz, right? Right, so our application uh, can identify where the ransomware took place and then roll back to the prior snapshot. And of course, they're confident that the snapshot uh, they've written into Atlas uh, has not been changed. Therefore, it does not have the ransomware. All right, so here's kind of a little twist for you. Everyone else that I'm working with in the data protection space is pretty much narrowly focused on ingest, right? We can eat this much data per second, that kind of jazz. What did you do with Atlas to focus on the restore? Because I know there's a lot of uh, you know, instant recovery, that kind of jazz out there. What's fueling that from a technology perspective? The benefits of writing it from scratch is we can customize it for application. Uh, so Atlas has uh, features built in to support the blob engine mm -hmm. and the snapshot chains. Uh, you know, one of these uh, benefits is the ability to do a zero copy recovery, um, which allows us to be essentially instantaneous. That makes sense. And when I talk to people in the field and our customers and things like that, they're really jazzed up about the instant recovery feature, the fact that they can build a workload, like you said, uh, in a matter of seconds, sometimes less than one second. So how does that work exactly? Because I know that a lot of other vendors, it usually takes you know minutes, hours, that kind of jazz to put it together. Here, we're pretty much consistently talking about a second or less to build a workload from a backup. You know, what's the technology behind that? Right, so because Atlas understands snapshot chains, uh, an instant recovery is simply a metadata operation. Um, and this can happen very fast. Um, no data actually has to move. Um, and then the reads are served on the fly by merging the snapshot chain. So does that matter if it's the most recent backup, or can you do this for weeks, months, you know, whatever old backup data that we have within the appliance? So again, it doesn't matter which snapshot we're talking about. Uh, it's always a snapshot chain to Atlas, and the instant recovery operation is exactly the same. Okay, let's bring it all home. We've talked about instant recovery, something that people love and use every day. We've talked about a scale-out file system that's resilient and self-healing and things like that. Why does the enterprise care? What does that align with their messaging and what they're trying to do within enterprise IT? You know, ultimately, we, we want the customer never to have to, to know or worry about Atlas, right? It should just scale. Um, it, should, it should be fault tolerant. And again, it should be performant. I like that answer. So that's been another episode of the Engineering Deep Dive. Adam, thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you.